Good Sunday morning, or Sunday afternoon, or Sunday evening, or whenever you're watching this video. It is great to be with you today for Pew Packers, and I'm excited about the time we have together. We're going to study from God's Word, we're going to sing lots of songs, and we're going to have a wonderful time. And so let's start with our new song, I Was Glad. Are you ready? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me that today is the day of the Lord. We'll commune with our Lord and we'll sing of his love and we'll give of our means as we're prospered from above. We will pray, we will pray and we'll study from his word. I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. How are you coming along with that song? Are you learning it? Are you starting to not have to look at the words as much? I hope you're committing that one to memory because it is so good. How about this great song? Jesus, name above all names, beautiful Savior, Glorious Lord, Emmanuel, God is with us, Blessed Redeemer, Living Word. His name really is above all names, isn't it? Jesus, name above all names. Blue skies and rainbows and sunbeams from heaven are what I can see. When my Lord is living in me, I know that Jesus is well and alive today. He makes his home in my heart. Nevermore will I be all alone since he promised me that we never would part. Excellent. The B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand upon the Word of God. The B-I-B-L-E, the B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand upon the Word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. We love the Bible, don't we? Now let's think about our questions for today. Are you ready? Who inspired the Bible? What's the answer? Well, God the Holy Spirit did, didn't he? Well, that's absolutely right. About uh, where the Bible has two big parts. What are the big parts? The Old Testament and the New Testament. All right. You know this so well by now, but I want you to really have that in your mind to always understand. So let's say the books of the Old Testament. Are you ready? Can you do it? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. Good job. Over here at the end. All right. Very, very good. Let's sing the New Testament books. Are you ready? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Acts and the letter to the Romans. First and second Corinthians. Galatians and Ephesians. Philippians, Colossians. First and second Thessalonians. First and second Timothy, Titus and Philemon, Hebrews, James, first and second Peter, first and second and third John, Jude and Revelation. All right, very good. Now, think about our time in Pew Packers since we started making these videos and watching them together. We have already talked about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These are called the Gospels, right? The Good News. And what are they about? They're about the life of Jesus Christ, right? When Jesus walked on the earth, these are the things that happened in his life. And each one focuses on a different aspect of his life when he lived here on earth. Then we talked about the book of Acts. And who wrote the book of Acts? Luke did, didn't he? Yeah, you remember that. Luke wrote the book of Acts. And Luke is a book of history. You know what's it the history of? The history of the church that belongs to Jesus, the church of Christ. 
And then we started looking at these letters. These are all letters, right? Epistles is another word for letters. And who wrote most of these? Well, Paul did, didn't he? Yes. And so we've already looked together at Romans and 1 Corinthians. And last time we looked at 2 Corinthians, which means today we get to look at the book of Galatians. And yes, this is another book that Paul wrote. And he wrote the book to Christians in the region of Galatia. And so we're going to be talking about Galatians here in just a moment. How many books are in the Old Testament? 39, right? So how many books are in the New Testament? Well, you know that answer is 27. And so how many books are there total? 66, right? Now, how many men wrote the, wrote the Bible? The Holy Spirit inspired about 40 different men to write all of those 66 books. And by now, I know you're getting to know those answers, aren't you? I'm proud of you. Thank you for your time that you're investing in our studies of God's Word and singing together. Which part of the Bible was written before Jesus came? Well, that's the Old Testament, isn't it? And so which part of the Bible was written after Jesus came? Well, that's the New Testament, right? And so which part of the Bible, which of those two big parts do we live under today? Which part has the rules for my life and your life? Well, that's the New Testament, isn't it? And that's what I want you to remember. The Old Testament is so valuable, but we live under the rules of the New Testament. All right. Have you got your hands right? Have you figured out how to do it? All right, so we put our fingers together, put our hands together like this, and then we put our two pointer fingers up together to make the steeple, and our thumbs make the door, right, of the church building. But we ask the question, is this the church? Oh, no, 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 it's a building with a steeple. Is this the church? Oh, yes, 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 the church is Christian people. Now, I do that song today to remind us that when Paul was writing the book of Galatians, just like all of his other letters, he was writing not to church buildings, he was writing to the church. He was writing to God's people, and he had a message from God that he was wanting them to receive, and so he was writing to people. People make up the Lord's church, and so that's what we're talking about. Now, in the book of Galatians, over in chapter 5, we read about the fruit of the Spirit. And so I want to sing a couple of songs about the fruit of the Spirit. And so let's sing this one together. And the fruit of the Spirit is love, and the fruit of the Spirit is joy, and the fruit of the Spirit is peace and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now notice a couple of these words. Love, joy, peace, Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those are the qualities that God wants us to live out in our lives. He wants us to be loving, doesn't he? He wants us to be happy, doesn't he? Full of joy. He wants us to have patience, and he wants us to be at peace, and he wants all of these things to be in our lives as his people. So let's think about a few of these, and let's sing a few more songs that have to do with some of the fruit of the Spirit. How about this one? A common love. A common love for each other. A common gift to the Savior. A common bond holding us to the Lord. A common strength when we're weary. A common hope for tomorrow. A common joy in the truth of God's word. I love that song, don't you? A common love. How about joy? That's part of the fruit of the Spirit, isn't it? I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I've got the love of Jesus, love of Jesus down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. I've got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in 
my heart. I've got the peace that passes understanding down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart, down in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. And if the devil doesn't like it, he can sit on attack. Ouch! Sit on attack. Ouch! Sit on attack. And if the devil doesn't like it, he can sit on attack. Ouch! Sit on attack to stay. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart, down in my heart. And I'm so happy, so very happy. I've got the love of Jesus in my heart. So we've talked about love and joy and peace. How about this one? Patience. Now, last week in story time, Mr. Adam told you about patience. Well, we were reading books about patience, and I tried to remember and think about and sing even this song. And I didn't have the words, and you didn't have the words. And so today what I want to do is sing this song together. It's going to be a new song, I'm sure, for all of you. But I hope this is one that we can learn together. And one of the things I've tried to do in Pew Packers is to teach some new songs. And that way I hope when we all come back together for Pew Packers at Westside that we'll know some of these songs and we can begin to teach them to others in the congregation too. Okay? So let's think about this one. Be patient. Be patient, be patient, don't be in such a hurry. When you get impatient, you'll only start to worry. Remember, remember that God is patient too. So think of all the times when others have to wait for you. Be patient, all right? That's a really good song, a very easy song. And so again, I hope that one of you will be able to lead that for us in Pew Packers again really, really soon. All right, be patient. So you can keep rewinding and rewatching and learn that song. And I think it will bless you. And I hope it will help us to remember to be patient with each other. Now, let's take the word of God and put it down in our hearts. Because what happens when you put the word of God in your, in your heart? Well, that means that it will be harder for you to sin against God, right? When we know God's will for our lives, then we will want to obey him and we'll want to do what is right. Now, today, we're going to be looking at the book of Galatians, all right? And so today, we're going to spend just a couple of minutes thinking about Paul's letter to the church in the region of Galatia. And you can ask your parents or someone close to you to help you find that region in a map, maybe at the back of your Bible. And maybe you'll know exactly these congregations of the church that Paul was writing to. Now, you can go ahead and have your Bible open to Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. I'm going to put it up on the screen here in just a moment. But I want to just explain just a couple of things about the book of Galatians, maybe that will help you as you think about and study later on the book of Galatians. Now, who do we say wrote the book of Galatians? Well, we know that Paul wrote it, right? And he was a little upset when he wrote this letter with the people of the church there because those people were listening to false teachers who were telling them that they didn't need to really obey the gospel of Christ, that they didn't really need to obey Jesus, but as Christians, they still needed to obey parts of the law of Moses. And so Paul is asking, why are you listening to people who are telling you to follow the law of Moses? He said, we're not under Moses anymore. In fact, if you want to be saved, you need to obey Jesus. You need to have faith in Jesus. And you need to remember that Jesus died on the cross and that he was buried in the tomb and that he rose from the dead. And he shed his blood so that you can be saved. And so you no longer need to follow the law of Moses in the Old Testament. Remind me, which part of the Bible, the Old Testament or the New Testament, has the rules that we live under today? Well, the New Testament does, doesn't it? We follow the law of Jesus today. We follow his commands. So let me ask you a question. 
Does that mean that we can live any way that we want to live and still be okay? As long as we claim to believe in Jesus, does that mean we can live however we want? Well, Paul says that's not right. We have to live by the Spirit today, according to the fruit of the Spirit. We need to obey the rules of God, and that's what Paul is saying, and we don't need to live by the flesh. We need to obey the commands of God. And so, young people, you know that that's right, don't you? That's not hard to understand at all, is it? Jesus died on the cross, and we obey him, don't we? And we want to do what he tells us to do, and so that's really important for us to understand. Now, I want you to take your Bibles and open with me to Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 1, and you're going to see it come up here on the screen here in just a moment. The first part of this verse, Paul says to these Christians, he says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. No longer are we bound by sin or bound by the old law, the law of Moses, but now in Christ and obeying Jesus, we can be free. We're free from the old law of Moses, and we can be made free from our sin. And so Jesus is the one who came to deliver us from the law of Moses, and he came ultimately to deliver us from our sin. All right, And so we need to think about Jesus as the one who came to rescue us. He came to deliver us, and now in him we can be free. All right, and so that's what I want you to think about when you think about the book of Galatians. All right, now close your Bible, take all your fingers out, and let's do a sword drill. Maybe we'll do it twice, all right? Let's do a sword drill, and so take your hand, and you, by now, oh, you're an expert at this, right? You know how to hold your Bible for a sword drill, and you know that I'm going to say, three, two, one, dig deep. That's what I'm going to say today, okay? Three, two, one, dig deep, and then you're going to find what verse? Galatians 5, verse 1. That's a key verse in the book of Galatians, all right? Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. Are you ready? You remember what I'm going to say? All right, hold your Bible. Galatians 5, verse 1. That's what we're looking for. Are you ready? 3, 2, 1, dig deep. Go, go, go. New Testament, right? Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. Oh, Galatians, sometimes it's a sneaky one. It hides. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. Galatians 5, found it. Galatians 5 verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty. That's talking about freedom by which Christ has made us free. Galatians 5 and verse 1. All right, shake it out. One more time. Let's see if you can beat Mr. Adam. Are you ready? All right, you know how to hold your Bible. We're going to the New Testament, right? Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. Are you ready? Don't go. Wait for me. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Dig deep. Go, 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 go. Galatians 5 and verse 1. I went way too far. Galatians 5 verse 1. Galatians, where did it hide? It is hiding in there. There's 1 Corinthians. Oh, 2 Corinthians. Ephesians, I went too far. Boom, found it. Galatians 5 and verse 1. All right, did you find it? Good job. All right, that is something that you can continue to do, and you can impress your friends, you can impress your siblings, you can impress your parents and grandparents with how fast you can find books of the Bible by continuing to push yourself to find those books and know exactly where they are. We want to take these words, and we want to put them inside of us and live lives that are pleasing to God because He loves us so much, and we want to show our love to Him by obeying him. All right, good work today. I'm proud of you. I know that you're working on that, and I, I want you to keep doing it, okay? Let's sing a few more songs. You ready? One, two, three, Jesus loves me. One, two, Jesus loves you. Three and four, he loves you more, more than you've ever been loved before. Five, six, seven, we're going to heaven. Eight, nine, Jesus is mine. Now we've sung it up to ten. We don't have time to sing it again. But one, two, three, Jesus loves me. One, two, Jesus loves you. And don't you ever forget it. 
One, two, three. Jesus loves me. All right. <laughs> I saved this one for last. You want to sing it together, the Grow and Shrink song? All right. You have to get down low, don't you? Are you down low? Is that as low as you can get? All right. Here we go. You ready? Read your Bible. Pray every day. Pray every day. Pray every day. Read your Bible. Pray every day. And you'll grow, grow, grow. And you'll grow, grow, grow. And you'll grow, grow, grow. Read your Bible. Pray every day. And you'll grow, grow, grow. Are ah, you ready? Now, what happens if we don't read our Bible and pray every day? Oh, no. We're going to shrink, aren't we? We don't want to shrink. We want to be big, right? All right. Don't read your Bible. Forget to pray. Forget to pray. Forget to pray. Don't read your Bible. Forget to pray. And you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. And you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. And you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. Don't read your Bible, forget to pray, and you'll shrink, shrink, shrink. Is this where you want to stay? Me neither. So how do we grow? We read our Bibles, and we pray every day. Are you ready? So read your Bible, pray every day, pray every day, pray every day. So read your Bible, pray every day, so you'll grow, grow, grow. And you'll grow, grow, grow. And you'll grow, grow, grow. So read your Bible, pray every day, so you'll grow, grow, grow. All right. And that's what we want to do. That's what it's all about. All right, another new song. How are you coming with this one? Are you learning it? It's so important to, to always know this is what the Bible tells us we must do if we want to go to heaven someday. All right? So this is what we need to remember. Start with our pinkies. You've got to hear what the Bible says. Believe in the Son of God. Repent. Be sorry for your sin. You've got to confess that Jesus is the Son of God. And be baptized to wash away your sins. And be faithful. All right, so very important always to remember. Tell me so I can hear you. Are you ready? What is true success? Living my life and going to heaven. That's right. What is true failure? Living my life and not going to heaven. We do not want to fail, right? We want to live our lives with God so that we can go to heaven and be with him forever. That's what it's about. What is God's plan for marriage? One man, one woman for life. Don't you forget it. So if you grow up and you choose to get married, who do I want to marry? A faithful Christian. That is exactly right. And we've had some fun together today. I'm so glad that we could do this, do this uh, even though it's so much more fun to be together in person. But keep practicing these songs. I keep giving you some new songs each time. So go back and watch some of the old videos if you haven't done that. And, and learn these new songs so that when we do come back together, we'll have lots of new songs to be able to teach and be able to sing together. All right? I think, thank you so much for being with us today. Let's bow our heads and let's have a prayer to God before we're done, okay? Bow your heads and close your eyes. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to be together today, even this way. Father, we're grateful for each of our young people at Westside and the love that they have for you. Father, may they always remember the love that you have for them. Father, we thank you so much for taking care of us, for keeping us safe, and we pray for those who might be going through times of sickness and those who've had surgeries and are recovering. Father, we pray that you'd be with each one and help them as we know only you can. Father, we pray that you'd help us to live according to the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. Father, help us to do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Help us to love you so much that we would want to do everything that you tell us to do because you loved us so much that you gave us your son that he could die on the cross for our sins. Father, please continue to be with us always. Again, bless us and, and keep all of our young people safe. And Father, we look forward to meeting together to worship you on Sunday. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
All right, so good to be with you today. Keep practicing these songs, and I'll see you next time, okay? Bye-bye.